physics, gears, exciting stuff. But it might be not so straightforward how to set that up in Unity. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can set that up. Now, the process also works for any concave shape. And you can do a quick test just by drawing a line through. And if you have multiple entry points and exit points, then that means that you have a concave shape. On the other side, we have the convex shapes, which just have one entry point and one exit point. If you'll need more information about the concave shapes versus convex shapes, I'll leave a link at the end of the video. But here is where all of that plays a role. So if we add a gear right here, for this gear, I have a mesh collider and it's just using the mesh of the gear. So if we create a 3D object, let's say a sphere, put it up right there and add a rigid body to it. Let's click play. And you can see that that sphere is actually following the gear's shape. But if we want our gear to have rigid body and we try adding that, we get an error. Non-convex mesh colliders don't work with a dynamic physics. Now we do have an option right here to convert this mesh collider to a convex shape. But as soon as we turn that on, you can see that the shape of the collider has changed and it looks more like an octagon than a gear now. And if we click play, you can see that our sphere is no longer following that gears. So if we have multiple gears, the gears are not going to actually work together. So the way you can make this gear work is by creating this gear with multiple convex collision shapes. So I'm going to go to Fusion 360. That's where I created that gear and show you what I mean. So this gear has eight teeth. So we can simplify the process by just focusing at one tooth only. And I have it separated out right here. So here is just one tooth from that gear. And this tooth is still a concave shape. So I have a concave problem right here, right here, and also right there. What I'll have to do is create multiple convex shapes from this. And for this one, if we take a look, these are the convex shapes that we can create. So I can make this a one convex shape. And then the bottom part right here, make another convex shape. So I am losing some details. So this part right here is not going to be in my collision. And same thing on the other side. And also this curve right here at the bottom, we're also dropping that. But that should still allow our gear to work. So here are the convex shapes. This is the top part. And then here's the bottom part. You combine them together. And this is the simplified tooth that we get. Now we can import that into Unity and I have those objects right here and then use those objects to recreate one of these teeth. And then we can use those teeth to recreate that gear. So just create eight of those teeth and just rotate them by 45 or however many degrees you need to turn to create the amount of teeth that you need. And that creates this gear for us. Now each of these teeth have the convex turned on for it. So our dynamic physics is going to work with it. And the gear, the parent of all these teeth, is the one that has the rigid body. And that what combines all of those collision shapes together and makes that gear as one. So now if I add this gear here and we click play, you can see that the sphere is colliding with it and all of the collisions geometry is working correctly. For the material, I have no friction. So there's not gonna be any friction between the gears. And then I have another gear right here and it has twice more teeth than uh, the other one. For this gear, I use the same teeth structure, except I added another rectangular here to offset it from the center that allowed me to add more teeth in this gear. So that's how you can set up the gears in Unity. And after you've set up gears, you can start playing around with them and doing all kinds of fun stuff like this car that I have here. I have a front axle which has two wheels connected to a cylinder and then I have the rear axle which has also two wheels and the gear is attached to the axle. And then I have this blue gear which is the driver gear and for it you can either use the constant force and use relative torque or you can create your own gear driver. I just use angular velocity for it and then 
between these two axles. I put some geometry that linked them together. And all of these are actually rigid bodies. So this car is completely dynamic. Some of the settings that you might want to change if you're gonna be working with this is default max angular speed. So the default is actually at seven. So if you wanna go any faster than that, you might need to change that. And also if you want more precision on your physics calculations, then you probably want to decrease the fixed timestamp. The default is 0.02 and I've decreased it. So technically I have four times more precision on my physics calculations but that setting does slow down performance of your simulation. So if you increase it too much and you have a lot of gears, you won't be able to render that fast. If you need to combine multiple gears together, all you have to do is make sure that your rigid body is on the parent of both of the gears. So I have a gear here and a gear here and the parent is the one that has the rigid body and that combines those gear together. That will allow you to create these step down gears for your simulations. If you need more information on concave shapes versus convex shapes, here's a video that might help you with that. Be sure to click on that like button if you found the video helpful and I'll see you in the next one.